Good morning and welcome to Wayne Goldsboro Television. Join in, Wayne, anytime. Oh, I thought I'd join in anytime now. <laughs> Hello, my name is Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best, and this is Thursday, December the 20th, and oh, welcome to the show. Are you sure it's the, you know, Christmas, I love this time of year, but man, it's just chaotic. It's like a whirlwind, I know. It is like, yeah, it's a whirlwind, it's a little chaotic here. Welcome to the program, it is, uh, it is a Thursday morning indeed, and you know, today is the last full day of what? fall. Is it? Yeah. Tomorrow starts winter season. Winter begin. well, huh? Winter season. Yeah, winter season. <laughs> what do you think I said? <laughs> you said, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Never winter mind. season starts tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, it is December 20th. Can you believe that? Uh, we have, what, five, five days. days till Christmas, and there's only like 11 or 12 days till the end of the year. It's hard to start, believe. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, well, we have great interviews on the show today. We have uh, someone representing the tax offices here today. Wayne, who would you speak with from the tax well, office? Well, Alan Lumpkin is the associate and uh, uh, director, and David Ward is the director of our Wayne County Tax Office, and those gentlemen will be speaking to us this morning about the end of the year taxes and what you need to be aware of and what you need to be doing this time of year with your county taxes. And then we also have someone from in from Crime Stoppers that is coming in to speak and ask for your help as a community member. You'll hear more about that coming up. And then we have a great treat. We have local celebrities and local musicians here. Uh, the Casey's came in to sing and they, did. they were fabulous. You'll see. Some of my favorite uh, people, that's uh, Samantha and, uh, and Daniel Casey are going to be with us here uh, a little later on this morning. And uh, I, I just, I just, I'm blown away. It's just, they're fantastic. They you'll, really are you'll great. just love it. They so look it. forward to that. All right. Uh, let's see. Also, I uh, want to let you know, hey, Fit and Fabulous 2013 is a Zumba and exercise class. Or not exercise. Don't, don't use that word. Aerobics. <laughs> Aerobics. Aerobics. <laughs> All right, so it's a Fit and Fabulous 2013 is coming up. It's a 29-week class. And wow, it that's be, a big commitment. It is. 29 weeks. It's on a uh, Monday and Wednesday evening beginning at 6 p.m. at Wayne Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, registration deadline on this is January 9th. So you have until the 9th of January to just make up your mind that you're going to do it and then go ahead and register for this. The registration deadline is January 9th or when the first 100 people sign up. So it's, so it's limited. Uh, participation is limited. The program fee is 30 bucks. Call Diane over at the uh, Cooperative Extension Service if you want to take part in this. Again, 29 weeks, pretty good while. But Do they have several classes? I uh, would assume so with 100 I, people signing I guess. up. Yes. They, they, that I, would be I, a I mighty large so. class. <laughs> be a big class, but it will be Zumba, and then they will alternate that with aerobics the other, the other, day, the other night. Uh, so anyway, if you uh, if you want to know more about that, call uh, Diane at 731-2515. That was good. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, I just made that number up. I don't know if it's right or not, but no, it is. It is. 731-919-731-2515 uh, and ask for Diane Lynch and tell her you want to sign up for the aerobics Zumba class coming up. Uh, it starts on the 14th, I believe, and uh, but again, the deadline, and it goes through July. So January 4th, middle of uh, January through July, 29 weeks. All right. Z that Zumba's fun, though. I, you don't feel like you're exercising. No. You have I, a good time. Well, I don't Zumba. I just like to watch. Uh, I hear you. All right, moving on. I want to <laughs> remind you, Wayne, that the curb market will be open Friday. Oh, boy. Tomorrow. Really? December the 21st. So that's, right. that's a nice little treat, and it'll be open from 3 until 6. It will be closed December the 28th and reopened January the 4th. And on the 4th, it'll be open from 3 to 6. You know, it's normal oh, okay. business hours. Yeah, so it'll be open tomorrow if you want to stop by and get some goodies for your holiday oh, season. Yeah. And they do have the goodies. I love the curb market. Oh, yeah. I love it. If good, you've ever been, you'll good, understand. Good food. Good, I good home cooking. Uh, well, we have bee beekeeping classes coming up here pretty soon. You may have seen the segment we had with beekeeper Bob Kemper. And uh, those classes begin January 3rd. They're here in Wayne County. And you can call, again, the Cooperative Extension Service. You want to know more about that. 731-2515. Right. Well, uh, 731-2515. Wayne always knows no, the phone numbers. That's the wrong phone number. Well, it's I'll take that back. 731-1525. <laughs> Thank you very much. I just want to see if you were listening. Were was, you listening? I was listening. She was listening. 731-1525. <laughs> okay. Ooh, good morning. Ooh, oh, yeah. Art classes, they are going to be available. A looking out the window scene of downtown Goldsboro will be held Thursday, January the 17th through February the 7th for our youth ages 4 to 12. 
The instruction will be Penny, Penny Craven is her name. The cost is $58, which includes all supplies to make your looking glass window seen. And this is all available at the Arts Council of Wayne County, 919-736-3300. Looking out the window scenes of downtown. You know, Penny Craven is very talented. She does a lot of those classes and uh, people love her. She's, she's just great. Kids well, she's her. there to guide, you know, guide the kids right. through, you know, the strokes that they're actually mm -hmm. painting and all of that. You know, so, you know, we all need a little guidance unless we're pros and speaking from experience, not a pro. Are, uh, <laughs> so are you saying you're not artsy kind of? You know, not, not no, not a lot of talent there. Yeah, you well, know, I try. Well, you know, I saw the My the mom crew, does, though. She's the, fantastic. I, I don't know what happened. I, I, I didn't were, get that gene <laughs> at all. <laughs> you were telling me about that. But, you know, so, yeah. you did well with the Christmas ball. Yeah, you know, but that, that was made. a lot of, con as you saw, you were having a really good time. I was concentrating. Yeah, you were concentrating. I wanted it to be just right. Oh, I just, yeah. I <laughs> you had a really good time. I guess I did have a good time with that, yeah. It was mesmerizing. It was fun. It was fun. It, it was. was. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm not artsy either. I, I, as a kid, maybe a little bit, but not so much. My husband is, and my mom is, but I have none of that. Well, well I say very little. You know, somebody has to balance it out. I guess so. You need some none and yeah, some and really some good. Some, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> you know. Well, Wayne, coming up, you've got the interview with several people yeah. from the tax office. Yeah, we've got a couple of guys in from the tax office. David Ward, the director, and Alan Lumpkin, the associate director there. Uh, they're going to be with us here uh, this morning here on WGTV Today. Let's see now what they have to talk about from the tax office. Today we're talking with representatives from our Wayne County Tax Office. First of all, Administrator David Ward is with us. Davis, thanks for being with us. Wayne, it's good to be here. And, of course, Alan Lumpkin, the Assistant Administrator, here with us. Thank you, Dave, uh, Alan. Thank you, Wayne. Gentlemen, uh, here it is. We're in the middle of the holiday season, and Wayne County offices are going to be open or closed. just depends on the office. Give us uh, your schedule for the holiday season in the Wayne County Tax Office. Okay, uh, Wayne, we are going to be open through next Friday. The following week, week of Christmas, we will be open on Thursday, the 27th. Mm -hmm. The following Monday, the 31st, and it will be closed Tuesday, uh, New Year's Day. Okay. And those hours are 8 to 5. 8, eight to, to five, 5 those days. Yes, yes. sir. That's All right. right. <clears throat> now, what are the deadlines for Wayne County taxpayers? The, the, the latest deadline. Latest deadline. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Uh, the deadline for paying your 2012 uh, taxes on your annual bills, real estate, etc. Uh, the deadline this year is January 7, 2013. Okay. Needs to be in our office or postmarked by the U.S. Postal Service by January 7th. Uh, office office uh, postal meter machines mm. do not count. Ah, so the Pitney Bowes machines or similar machines do not count. That's correct. Okay, so it has to go through the post office and be stamped. The, the postmark stamped by the post office no later than the close of business, the 13th. Uh, seven, I mean, seven, the 7th. Seven, 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 yes, seven, that's yes. right. Seven, January 7th. Okay. January 7th. Okay. And, All and, right. and also, it's actually two extra days this year, Wayne. Usually, the, by, per statute, it's January 5th is yeah. the last day, but since it falls on a Saturday, right. you get until the following Monday. Oh, okay. Right. Well, that's okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Alan, what are, what are we looking at now? What's changed in the last year since we, since we filed last year? Has any change? Changes uh, been made? As far as the paying, uh, the bills should be very similar. Uh, the tax rates did not change for mm, 2012. Right. The values are pretty constant unless you made some changes mm. uh, to your property. So the bills should be very similar to last year's bills as far as what they're paying. Uh, right. And then also leading up to January, we have our listing period starting all over again. So we start our cycle all over again. All right. Now, what are we paying taxes on by January 7th? What, what are we paying? would be your 2012 annual bill, which would be your bill on real estate, any personal property you had, any business personal property you had that you listed. Those are the bills you're paying by January 7th, 13. Boats? Uh, yes, boats, mobile homes, uh, again, business personal property, anything that uh, we consider personal property other right. than real estate. Uh, but you're also paying on your real estate bills. Okay. It's about basically anything you own January 1st, 2012. Right. Mm -hmm. We sent those <laughs> bills out probably in August, and you had until January 7th to get this paid. So if someone bought a car or a truck in December of this year. Let's not talk about vehicles. That's a whole different animal. Uh, all right. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, vehicles are different animals. Different. Yes. Right. We're only talking about personal property. 
and real property, real, real estate, and real estate property. profit, but that's not correct. vehicles are different. Different vehicles not do not count because that's how the taxes on that's paid at a different time. Right, basically that that's based on your renewal date. When you renew your tag at DMV, right. about three months after that, you get a bill from us. That, right. That's on a staggered cycle, depending right. on your renewal date. All right, now that's right. relatively new. That had, we haven't been doing that too long. Yeah, I've been doing yeah. it since about '93. Has it been '93? Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's oh, not only, a long only time. 20 years. Only 20 years. Only 20 years. That's not a long time to me, you know. <laughs> but uh, I guess it has been a long time. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but uh, that works out real well, though, right? Oh, because yes. uh, it, 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 it doesn't right. bottleneck at the end of the year for you. Right. It's it's okay. spread out over the 12 months. All right. Then what am I thinking of? I'm thinking of something else then, uh, a change that's been made well, over the last year. Th there so. is a new change coming. It, it goes into effect next year as far as the vehicle. That's a whole different, different right, law Maybe that's change. what I'm thinking about, Might, something be. that's coming up. Yeah, it could okay. be. So uh, airplanes, uh, does that fall in under? Yes. Okay. Yes, that, that's part of the personal property that you, okay. that you have to pay. And plus, also, you have to list that during the month of January, which right. is coming up. The month of January, you have to, any personal property that you own, you have to list that. Boats, uh, mobile homes, airplanes, business personal properties mm -hmm. such as David yeah. mentioned, all that has to be listed in January. In addition to real estate, we're on a permanent listing system, which means that if everything is the same, mm -hmm. if you didn't do anything to your property, right. you don't have to tell us that. Right. But if you change something, if you tore some buildings down, if you added some buildings, build a new house, anything like that, you're supposed to report that during the month of January. But if you didn't change anything, it stays the if same. You don't. Real the same, there's, there's right. do you, you send the you send the form in though, don't you? No, sir. You don't do anything. Do. It's just automatic. Yeah. Uh, as far as the real estate. As far as real, real estate, estate goes. Personal, yes. personal property is annual. You have to do that every year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. So that works out pretty well, though, doesn't it? It does. It, it does. does. It saves you a lot of work there in the long run. If anybody, yeah. any, again, uh, you're open on Thursday, I believe. Thursday, week of Christmas on Thursday. Week yes. of Christmas on mm -hmm. Thursday only, and then again on Monday the 30th. 30, yes, 31st. 31st, 31st, 31st. yeah. Correct. Yes, 31st. Yeah, New Year's Eve. Right. And your hours again are 8 to 5. 8 to 5 those days. So anyone yes. who has a last minute question, uh, filing by January 7th, uh, of course, you know, they can call you on the 2nd, 3rd, or 4th. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can call you, but how do they get in touch with you? Uh, uh, yeah, the, our, our main office number is 919-731-1461. 1461. 731-1461. Correct. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Thank and, you, Wayne. Uh, you too. Happy Wayne. Happy holidays to you there. I hope you have a good one also. Thank you very much, David Ward, good Administrator of the Wayne County Tax Office and Tax Department. Thank you, Alan Lumpkin. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Happy Always holidays. Pleasure. Merry Christmas. The pleasure's mine. Thank you, sir. Thanks. And that's the look. Uh, that's the, uh, the, the way it is here at uh, the Wayne County Tax Office, Tax Department here at WGTV Today. And we're back on WGTV Today. That's Wayne Goldsboro Television. Thank you for being with us. And let's see now. Today is December 20th. And I hope you were able to garner something or learn something. I didn't mean to say garner. No. But I hope you were able to learn something from that, uh, that uh, discussion we had there with, uh, with Alan and David, too. Uh, really nice guys. And they do a great job for our tax department. They do. And, and Wayne, we want to give a great big congratulations and shout out to Tammy Keel. She is the principal of Mount Olive Middle School. Oh, yeah. She was recently named principal of the year Woo. by the North Carolina School Community Health Alliance. Woo. Kudos to you. Congratulations, Tammy. Yeah. The award recognizes administration for recognizing and supporting the school-based health centers. So Tammy has done a fabulous job. Tammy Keel, the principal of Mount Olive Middle School. Congratulations to you. That's great. That is just great. Well, today, December 20th, today is Dating Game Day. You remember the dating game on television with Jim Nance? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was his name. Jim Lang, I mean. Not Jim Nance. Jim well, Lang. <laughs> well, no wonder you didn't know who it was. Jim Lang was his name. Anyway, that show was uh, created by a guy by the name of Chuck Barris. And Chuck Barris is a guy who created the, a show called The Gong Show. Uh, I remember that and, show and quite other well. things as well. But anyway... Uh, uh, the uh, Dating Game debuted this day in 1965 and actually had several soon to become celebrities including Tom Selleck was one of the, the uh, wow. contestants on that show as well as uh, others as well but they used that show as kind of a jumping off right. point to kind of get get a jump start but uh, anyway that was this day 1965 and that that's a long time ago in some 47 years just, ago oh my god you would know that, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Today is BPT Day. What does that mean? BPT Remembrance Day is before Pop-Tart, a day to see if you can remember what breakfast was like before Pop-Tart. <laughs> ah! Okay. It's also this day in 1879 when Mr. Edison, that's T.A., 
Uh, Thomas Alva Edison demonstrated his incandescent light at Menlo Park, New Jersey this day. Now, he and a fellow by the name of Elisha Gray were going at it pretty hard. Gray actually had also created a, an, an incandescent light, but Edison was the first one to get the, to get the patent on it, so he got credit for it. But boy, I, that, I wonder the, how many times that has happened throughout history. There have been several that you happens, know, yeah. fighting to get their invention done first, and then whoever happens to turn it in and get the patent first exactly. is the one that exactly. gets the credit. Sure, that's exactly what happened. But uh, anyway, that was on this day, 1879. Uh, the year was 1920 when a fellow by the name of Leslie Towns Hope became a U.S. citizen. He was 17 years of age. He'd been in America since the age of five, and he later on changed his name to Bob Hope. Ah who actually was a boxer at one time. You know, Bob Hope was a boxer. He went by the name of Packy East. Packy East. I have no idea where he came up with that. But anyway, he became a U.S. citizen this day, 1920. Very funny guy. Wichita woman, uh, <laughs> 1989. Maybe this could, I don't know. Has this ever happened to you? What Wichita you woman at the age of 20 was kidnapped outside her workplace. She was taken to a local mall, mm -hmm. and she was, quote, unquote, forced to shop. They made her shop for five hours. For anybody in particular? I don't know. Anyway, they, they ended up taking her purse. That was a story, and she's sticking to it. They forced her to shop. 15-pound concrete garden frog was returned to its home in Swansea, Massachusetts after a seven-month, you heard this, right? <laughs> a 15-pound concrete garden frog. The owners had received a letter saying the frog just needed to get away from the grind of garden life but would be home for the holidays. Well, it was, just in time for Christmas. This was in 1998, it was. They also received photographs and postcards from the frog in New York, Venezuela, <laughs> Venice, Italy, and Indonesia. The frog oh, had been my everywhere. goodness, my goodness. And the year was 2003 when uh, Judge Tom Du Bois of Columbia City, Indiana, continued his Christmas amnesty tradition. The judge would let minor traffic offenders off without a fine if they would stand up in court and sing a Christmas song. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, the, some of the singers needed a little help, so he sometimes would form duets, trios, and quartets. Most offenders either sang Jingle Bells or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Now, that's a judge with a Christmas spirit. Anita Baker, <laughs> the singer, turning 55 today. Big talent she is. And that's part of the almanac of today, December 20th. 2012. Wow. That's what I said. Wow. <laughs> we want to remind everyone the Christmas play at the Cliffs of the Noose. That's on Wednesday, December the 26th. Remember the day after Christmas from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the parking lots. And the parking lots will be blocked off so children can bring the, the toys that they received during the Christmas holidays in a safe location, like if they got something they would like to ride, oh, yeah. whether it's a bicycle or a big wheel or whatever happens to be popular wow. these days, you can take it to the parking lot of the Cliffs of the Noose and have a safe area that'll be blocked off completely yeah. so you can ride your bikes. That's a great idea. And that's perfect for those people who don't have a large backyard and they don't have area that they feel safe for young people. Yeah. So join them at the Cliffs of the Noose, a that's Christmas great. play day. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, got word here from Georgia Dees at Wayne, Wayne Memorial Hospital. There's something called advanced directives that's going to be the topic of at the next congestive heart failure support group meeting that will be coming up soon you don't have a date i don't have a date on that <laughs> we'll get back with you on that one recently there was an article in a magazine about the things we tell our kids and whether or not these sayings are true like no swimming for an hour after lunch because you'll cramp up right, do you think that's that. true well, I always heard that. You've always heard that, but that's not true. It's not true. Oh. Don't eat snow. It'll make you sick. Well, I never paid attention to that one either. Well, that could be possible. Mm. What? <laughs> that could be possible. I don't mean that you didn't pay attention. Oh, yeah. I mean that it could make you sick. Oh, it could? Oh, okay. It I guess could. with all the air pollution and everything. Yeah. Right. You never know what's been there. That's true. You don't know where that snow's been. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Another saying, it's too dark in here. You'll hurt your eyes. You think that's true? I've never heard that. Uh, I don't think so. That's not true. Oh, good. There you no go. No permanent damage there. <laughs> One for me. Take the Band-Aid off to let your cut air out. I don't know. It makes sense. Nope. Nope. Skin cells regrow about twice as fast on covered wounds. Really? 
All right, okay. That's what my document says. How about, well, <laughs> hey, if it's a document, it's got to be true. That's no. right. <laughs> but that's interesting, very interesting. Yeah, I, but I you know, heard. different doctors say different things, so yeah. I guess it depends on the wound and, you know, how fast it needs to heal and so on and yeah. so forth. Yeah, okay, very yeah. good. So we say interesting things. That is very interesting. All right, we have a we have a, a two for one thing coming up here, right? Okay. Up next, Marissa Davis with the Goldsboro Police Department is going to be here talking about uh, Crime Stoppers, right? You spoke she with is. Her. I spoke with Mar Corporal Marissa Davis, and she t is talking with us about Crime Stoppers, uh, the benefits of using Crime Stoppers, and one particular scenario we need your help with. So stay tuned for that. And also, we have the Casey's in the in the house. They are here in the studio. And they are singing, and oh, it's fabulous. So stay tuned for both Crumb Stoppers and the Casey's. Hi, good morning. And with me today is Corporal Marissa Davis from the Goldsboro Police Department. Good morning, and welcome to the show. Good morning. So, Marissa, you are here today to talk with us about safety tips for the rest of the holidays, all the way through New Year's. Yes. So tell us some things that we should be looking for or things that we should be aware of as we, you know, here at the last minute, this last week or so before Christmas, what should we be thinking about? What should we be looking out for as we continue to go through the holidays? Well, Kim, I know everyone is excited and remembering the, re the reason for the season, but we want people to remember safety. You know, safety for your, just in your surroundings, for your neighbors, yourself. We should always think of others as well as being when we want to be safe. Um, just going, leaving your house for an extended period of time. You know, the police department does a, a keep check. Well, we'll keep check at your residence for um, the time that you're gone and just to be sure that things are um, going well while you're away from your home. So you'll ride by and keep, a, keep it continually watched? Yeah, we will do that. Nice. And it's free, Kim. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Along with letting your neighbors know that you're gone, stopping your newspapers and things of that nature, mm -hmm. just so um, it won't look like no one's home during right. that time. Have your, have your neighbors collect your mail or your paper or exactly. whatever, so it's not building up in your news, news box. Exactly. Wow. Well, tell us about like Christmas trees and Christmas gifts in the in the home. You know, we all celebrate, or a lot of us celebrate that way, and we have gifts all around our Christmas trees. Tell us something to watch for with that. Well, Kim, with the Christmas trees, don't put the gifts at the window where someone can just come by and see, hey, there's a big box there. So um, keep those gifts away from the window. Um, be sure that they're secure in the, in the house. I know we like to put them under the tree, but sometimes just securing them out of the, the view of just average people walking through the neighborhood. Right, is great. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Marissa, you had mentioned earlier something about during the holiday season about how you know we, we need to pay more attention to keeping our cars locked and various things like that. Give us more details on that. Well, Kim, when you're out shopping and you've you've gone to several stores, be sure that when you um before you go to the next store and you're driving around, put those bags in the trunk of your car. Don't leave them in the, um, in the, in the, back seat. exactly, the back seat of your vehicle. Secure them in the trunk as you're going from store to store. And then one thing, um, just don't be overloaded with bags as you're shopping because that just, op that's an opportunity. You want to keep your hands free and be able to, um, whatever you need to do with your hands. You don't want them to be overloaded with bags. Now how about after the holidays? When we've opened all these big boxes, whether you've got a television or whatever the case may be, and you put all these big boxes out there for you know the trash men to come pick them up, but what is that doing? Exactly. That's showing people the things that you have received during the holiday time. So, Kim, once you're excited and you have those boxes, don't put them at the road. Be sure that you're going to have to recycle, but break them down and put them into your recycle bin so the, um, the proper people can get them and destroy those boxes. And once you receive those nice items, like your televisions, your computers, we want you to record those serial numbers on those items. So if there was an emergency, a break-in of something of that sort that you needed to reflect back on those numbers, you you have them. So that's um, something as well. And um, another thing with the GPS is I know we get so many things oh, yes. during the holiday season that, you know, we want to use those items. Don't have them right in your car. Once you're finished using them, take them out, put them yeah, away. Exactly. Put them away. Se secure them that only you know that they're there. So that's um, just a, a reminder of some things to do during the holiday season. Well, you know, we're, we're always glad to have you here because you remind us of the things we need to be aware of. Uh, we know these things, it's common mm -hmm. sense, but sometimes we just need to be reminded. So yeah. thank you, Corporal Davis, for coming today to give us some to-dos 
through the holidays. Yes. And Kim, on behalf of um, the Goldsboro Police Department, Chief Jeff Stewart, we would like to wish all the citizens of Goldsboro a very Merry Christmas. And today, thank you so much for joining us. Have a good afternoon. I am so excited. Today we have here in the studio, we have Daniel Casey and lovely Samantha Casey. And you guys are just so popular. Uh, people love you. And the reason is because you sure make good music. Well, now, you. now you're, also, you're also known as the Bluegrass Jam. Yes, sir. Samantha Casey and the Bluegrass Jams. But we've got a, we've got a couple of jammers here right now. And uh, tell me, uh, Daniel, how did, how did this get started? Well, Samantha started playing fiddle when she was five, Wayne. Five and, years old. Uh, we Mind started you. playing in public when she was seven, and it's just blossomed from there. Well, I tell you what, you're very popular, and in fact, here a couple of years ago, wasn't it? Uh, I believe that uh, you uh, achieved national acclaim as well. Is right that, when right? we won the the Oreo cookie. That's right. Jingle contest. That's right. That was a lot of fun. That well, I'm sure it was, and uh, you you certainly made us proud. So, uh, but anyway, we're here to uh, to enjoy some music by Daniel and Samantha Casey, and if you would like, you just go right ahead and start. Okay. All Is that right. good? All right. Go right ahead. Samantha, let's do Light of the Stable. All right. Hail, hail to the newborn King, let our voices sing Him our praises. Hail, hail to the guiding light that brought us tonight to our Savior. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Cast aside your fear and be thankful. Alleluia. 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 wonderful now tell me about that song that is one we learned from a YouTube clip I don't know exactly where it came from really I really don't we learned it um, to give us a, a, another Christmas song that maybe is not overdone right. you know? that's a beautiful song Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, very well done what's next well what would you like to do Samantha how about silver bells silver bells that's okay. good that's good This is one we just started doing this year. Ready? <coughs> City sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style. In the air there's a feeling of Christmas. Children laughing, people passing, meeting smile after smile. And on every street corner you Silver bells, silver bells, silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Ring-a-ling, ring-a-ling, 
Hear them ring, ring. soon it will be Christmas Day. Strings of street lights, even stop lights, blinking bright red and green. As the shoppers rush home with their treasure. Hear the snow crunch, see the kids bunch, this is Santa's big scene. And above all the bustle you'll hear. Silver bells, silver bells, silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Silver bells, silver bells, silver bells, silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ling, ring a ling, hear them ring, hear them ring, soon it will be Christmas day. And soon it will be Christmas Day. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining far through shadows dim, giving the light for the Give us the lamp to light the way Unto the land of perfect day Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem Shine Give 
us the lamp to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, that's beautiful. Tell me about that song. That is one we learned from Amy Lou Harris. Ah. I don't know actually who wrote it, but yeah. it's a beautiful, that's my favorite Christmas song. Yeah, that's a beautiful it song. Been for years. What are some of the fun songs that you sing? Not necessarily Christmas, but some of the... Some uh, of the fun do, songs. Yeah, do a fun song for us. You want to do a fun song? What Let's do like some that? rock and roll, Daddy. Yeah. Okay, let me get my banjo. A little rock and roll. Little okay. Rock and roll. We'll get the banjo here. Okay. All right. Very impressive. Uh, thank you. That was great. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. You. So you guys, uh, what are you doing now? Are you? Uh, do you have a, a plan? Do you have a tour? I know you're still in school right now, but uh, what's going on? Well, we're we're playing a few festivals this coming year That's and good. different events around Goldsboro and Eastern North Carolina right. and um, up in Virginia. So um, we're just kind of taking it as it comes okay. and enjoying every minute. Of That's it. fantastic. Never lose that enjoyment. And we want to uh, thank our producer today, the uh, lovely and talented uh, Judy Casey. Thank you very much <laughs> for uh, helping us with all this. And Daniel Casey and Samantha Casey, you guys are just fantastic. I oh, thank you very much for being with us. Merry Christmas to you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank you very much. I'm Wayne Alley. Howdy ho, neighbor. Why are you working so hard? Gotta cut this grass. Ah! Whoa, whoa, son. We need to plant some no-maintenance trees and bushes along there. Yeah, your fertilizer's getting into the water. That causes algae to grow and fish to die. Ah. Yeah, plus, trees and bushes keep the yard from eroding and protect that creek. Ha! Ah, you're right. I'm gonna get my planting tools. Late fall is a great time to plant trees. Learn more at ncleanwater.org. If you're in need of medical treatment or you have a doctor's appointment at an out-of-town facility and you have no way to get there, call Wayne Nett. 
WayNet is a non-emergency transport system for Wayne County citizens and it provides transportation to the stretcher of the wheelchair-bound citizens, as well as the bedridden, the chronically ill, and the injured patient with services to doctor's appointments, dialysis, hospital admission, and discharges. Hi, I'm Nanette Sutton. Call WayNet for details or to schedule a transport at 919-705-1956. Welcome back, and wasn't that absolutely wonderful? It was great. I love the cases. They're just fantastic. They are some talented individuals. They are that. You know, they, uh, uh, for many years, uh, Daniel has uh, owned and operated Daniel uh, Case cases. Garden Center out on Highway 70. That's a great place, and it's a lot bigger than it looks like from the road. It certainly from is. the road, it looks like <laughs> it's about this big, but it goes back for like 100 miles. It certainly does. Well, you know, they came and played for us at National Night Out. Yes, they did. And they did amazing. a great job yes. then, too. It just amazes me. How, how they can pick and play like that. I know. It, it's, I know. it's, you know, people have so much talent. And Once have, again, we are very lucky to have so many talented people right here in our community. Indeed, we do. And, you know, Samantha has come, she's always getting better and better oh, yes. on that, on oh, that yes. uh, fiddle or violin or fiddle, but uh, she's very talented. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel and, and Samantha Casey, and of course, the Bluegrass Jam also they have. That is uh, one of their organizations as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when there's more than just the two of them. Uh, they have a bass man who comes in and plays, and uh, they have others as well. Remember, they won a big jingle years ago. Yeah, they won uh, a national they Oreo certainly cookie did. jingle. They certainly did. They, it was great. Yeah, it was fantastic. They appeared on national television mm -hmm. and, and all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was fun. Well, talking about huh, cookies, I'm going to give you a few tips on um, how to eat healthy during the holiday season at holiday parties. Who I cares? Know. I mean, it's the holidays. Well, so know? listen up. I'm going to let you choose some now. Oh, boy. Okay, so you're attending a holiday potluck. Uh, okay. Which hors d'oeuvre staple is your best bet? So which one should you eat? Uh, which one should I should eat? Should you eat? I'm going to give you three choices. Okay. A handful of nuts, pigs in a blanket, or cheese and crackers. Out of those three, which one do you think is the healthiest choice? Not the one you'd necessarily choose, but the healthiest choice. Oh. <laughs> Which one? Well, I one, think two, I, or three? I think I know. Well, let's see if you're right. I think I know because I, I kind of study that sort of thing. From Do time you really? Time. I would have to say a handful of nuts. Ding, ding. Is that right? You are right. Oh, oh. oh boy. <laughs> you are exactly oh, boy. right. Yeah, they are. <laughs> now, you can't eat too many of them because they're fattening. But you You're said a handful. a handful. That's right. Okay, right. one more. At the same time, I enjoy pigs in a blanket well, and the cheese. cheese and the crackers. Yeah, I do. Don't we all? Oh, yeah. I know. That's the holidays. Okay. Okay. You're meeting friends for holiday cocktails. Okay. okay. Which right. beverage will least affect your blood glucose level? Okay, so least effect. Least effect. Which beverage? Which beverage? These are cocktails. These are cocktails. Like, I don't have any idea about any of that stuff. Well, listen to these three choices now. Okay, maybe now. a little. Okay. okay. A, beer. B, wine. Three, a gin and tonic. A, beer. Yeah. B, wine. C, a gin and tonic. Which one will least affect your blood glucose level? I'm guessing wine. Ding, ding. Really? Two out of two. Woo! Wine is the correct answer. Right. Good job. Is that because of the resveratrol or whatever you call it? I have no idea. I have no idea. All either. I know is that is the correct answer. I ding, ding. I made that up, yeah. <laughs> Very good. You. you are on your P's Woo! and Q's this morning. Roll. You certainly are. Okay. And uh, speaking <laughs> of which, I'd love to have a roll. <laughs> yeah. That's not very healthy right now, is no, it? No, absolutely right. not. There's no more? <laughs> that's, that's it. You got two. <laughs> okay. Food and big cocktails. Well, that's okay. Hey, that's all right. I'm betting a that thousand That was your here. choice. You did all great. Right. Well, speaking of bee beekeeping. Yes. Beekeeper Bob was the, the guest of, uh, of uh, Jessica Strickland, who was in last week with the, uh, or earlier this week, mm -hmm. with the, uh, the bees uh, beekeeping. You know, beekeeping has become a very It has. Serious it really hobby. has. People love beekeeping. And I learned it's a lot. It's dangerous, too, though. You have to be very careful. So I hear. Really? Yes. You have to really know what you're doing. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I'd rather not. I'd rather guess at it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not safe. No, not safe. I know that's not very smart either. Uh, don't guess at anything. You know what you're doing. But anyway, uh, coming up on January 3rd and every Thursday night after that through uh, the 1st of February, 
They're going to have beekeeping classes available at the uh, Wayne County Public Library. There is a, uh, you know, the beekeeping uh, was kind of slow to get started here in Wayne County, although there have been attempts before, but there was a great beekeeping uh, organization over in Lenore County for a while, and really? now, and it became so big, people from Wayne County found out about it, and, and yeah. now they were There's going over there. There's quite a few in our community There's that do a, that now. quite a few beekeepers here, and now yeah. it's an organization, uh, beekeeping organization, hmm. um, and you can uh, become a part of the organization, or you can just simply go to these beekeeping classes. It's going to be held on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. at the Wayne County Public Library. Rick Coor will be the will be the education coordinator. He'll be coordinating. Um, the fee is $25. That does not include the textbook, which you would want to get. Anyway, call Diane over at the Cooperative Extension Service to get information about that. Okay, that's a lot of fun. Bee Great hobby. And people are afraid of bees. And as you heard uh, beekeeper Bob mention earlier this week, you don't have to be afraid of bees. The only time a bee is going to sting you, a honeybee that is, mm -hmm. is when you are a threat to him or her or its home. Right, as with time. a lot of animals. He said you could actually take your finger and just kind of, if they'll let you pet them. Well, I certainly would not take uh, that chance or no, try that. Because they may think, you know, <laughs> gee. You know. Don't try that at home. Don't try that at home, okay. <laughs> what else do we have? Well, we do want to give our condolences to the family of County Commissioner J.D. Evans. Um, he has recently passed, and, and we do want to say we, um, we are with our thoughts and prayers are with his family and his friends, and we do want to talk about and give information regarding his funeral services. The yeah, funeral services will be held this, uh, this Saturday. Saturday at noon at Southern Wayne High School, I believe, and uh, we're certainly going to miss J.D. Evans. He was, he was a, a beacon here at the, mm -hmm. uh, the courthouse for many years. Such uh, a kind, kind soul. Yes, indeed. He was an educator. Absolutely an educator. And, you know, I, I was telling uh, Wayne earlier, I have known J.D. Evans my entire life. His son and I went through school together from kindergarten and graduated all the way through high school together. And such a fine family. And I know he is going to be greatly, greatly missed. I he, know he is in yes. the community. He certainly is going to be missed in the community. District 2 commission chair, uh, Commissioner, uh, County Commissioner uh, J.D. Evans uh, passed this weekend, and Sunday, um, Sunday or Monday morning, uh, I forget which. But it was Monday, Tuesday morning. I'm sorry, Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. morning, about three o'clock, three thirty. Uh, and again at uh, Southern Wayne High School at noon Saturday. this Saturday. That's right. All right. Okay. All right, Mr. Wayne, uh, what else see, do you what have? Else do we have here. Oh, we do want to remind everybody also that Friday tomorrow will be our last live day. Uh, for about two weeks, we will have reruns running on the show, right. and we will be spending the holidays with our family. We'll not be coming in to to film the shows in the morning. But we do want to remind you to watch the reruns. We'll have several Christmas things happening from our community that will be running from Christmas parades to Jingle in the Park, and the list goes on and That's on. Right. Um, but we will be back on January the 7th, live and ready to move forward with the new year. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a way to watch every single one of those reruns. Are you? Just in case I say something differently than the first time I said it. <laughs> Wayne, Wayne, case. Wayne. Don't wear it out. <laughs> Okay. Well, oh my goodness, is that, it? that is it. Well, my friend, tomorrow will be our final day before we are before we are on hiatus. Hiatus, and uh, <laughs> up until January seventh. So join us again tomorrow morning here at seven a.m. on WGTV today, Wayne Goldsboro TV. And until tomorrow, I'm Wayne Alley, and I'm Kim Best. Happy holidays, and this is what's happening in your community.